going to tonight. We're not going to tarry too long tonight. We're going to try to move briefly in the word of the Lord. Let us continue to pray for those that may be going through some sickness or infliction or whatever in the body that God said will continue to do the work in which he stored them that God said will give miraculous recover to people that will blow people mind. Amen. Because God is able to do that. Yes, he is. Tell your neighbor, say, God is able to do that. God is able to do that. Yes, he is. Y'all got to kind of warm up here tonight. Amen. 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 In the book of Exodus, chapter 3, starting at verse number 16, the Bible says, Go. And gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt. Oh, yes. Yeah. Unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites mm -hmm. unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, 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 it, it'll take a whole lot of faith yes, for you to believe that you in bondage and slavery, mm -hmm. that you're living in poverty, right, right. that you're living beneath the poverty level. Mm -hmm. And God's saying that I'm going to take you to a land that's flowing yes, with milk yes, and honey. Speak Verse number 18 says, And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt, and ye shall say unto him, the Lord God of the Hebrews have met with us, and now let us go. We beseech thee three days' journey into the wilderness, and we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. And I, <clears throat> and I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor. Thank you, Lord. Y'all, 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 Somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you for favor. Lord, I thank you for favor. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go out empty. Somebody, somebody, somebody gonna get that before. Somebody gonna get that. Tell your neighbor if you take your seat tonight, tell them say you have more favor. Than you think. Oh, thank you, Lord. Tonight for a short period of time, that's what I'm gonna deal with tonight. Favor is not overrated. Talk about the favor of God. When we look at this word favor, this word means graciousness. This word means kindness. This word means favor. It means beauty. It means grace. It means gracious. It means pleasant. This word it means precious. Now you mean to tell me when God gives you favor that He's saying that you are precious in His sight. This word it means well favored. It means properly to bend a stoop in kindness to an inferior. And so now when you look at that terminology, to bend a stoop in kindness to an inferior, that's saying that God going to bend a stoop. Y'all ain't catching yes, that. Sir. Just to help somebody like yes, us. Yes, somebody that's yes, inferior. Yes, it means to, to bestow. It means to employ. It means to move to favor by petition. And see, the thing I like about it, we don't have to wait for somebody to vote on it. We don't have to wait for the Congress to pass those certain laws and stuff. We can understand that the favor of God surpasses anything that man can do for you. A lot of times, a lot of times, we're dependent on people to bless us. We're dependent on people to help us. We put our faith and our confidence in people. When our 
faith and confidence should be in God. So when you have your faith and confidence in God, it does not make any difference what people say about it, what people think about it. When your faith and confidence in God, you understand and realize that God is going to work the situation out for you. Yeah. Oh yeah, sometimes when you start talking about the favor of God, a lot of times people say I'm favored and I, I'm, I'm blessed of the Lord and highly favored. Mm -hmm. You ought to understand what you're saying when you're saying that you're blessed of the Lord and highly favored. That means that God has shown you grace. That means God has shown you unmerited favor. That means that God showed you mercy and kindness. That means that God loved you when you was unlovable. God bless you when he should have been cursing you. God has something special for you when he really just should have cast you off. Well, y'all don't want to talk to me tonight. And so now we will understand that the favor of God surpasses anything, anything that your mind can imagine. Amen. And see what God is doing with this series of messages that God been planted in our spirit. God is trying to get you to the point where you stop doubting your belief. I mean, start, start believing what he says and stop doubting what he says. God trying to get you to the point now where you stop depending on your paycheck. Hallelujah. You stop depending on your job. That you stop depending on somebody to help you to bless you. But you believe in the faith of God. And if the faith of God is up on your life, then you understand and realize that can't nobody stop you from being blessed. When the faith of God is up on your life, you may not even be due for a promotion on a job. You, you may be one of those that just started. You may be somebody new on a job. When God showed you favor, God would get you a promotion. You don't have to brown nose. You don't have to suck up to nobody. You don't have to kiss nobody. No parts of nobody. Or nothing. And try to be for the Lord. But when God bless you with favor, I want you to understand that can't nobody stop it. Oh yeah, people may get upset with you. People may get jealous and say all kinds of crazy stuff about you, but when the favor of God is upon your life, God will take that boss man that been treating you, been mistreating you, been handling you the wrong way, and God will take that boss man and make him your footstool. Well, I know what I'm talking about today. I said, God would open doors that you thought was impossible to be open. Because a lot of times we want to get a hookup. We want somebody to hook us up. And I understand that. But that, and actually, I don't care who you go to get a hookup unless God be the one that behind the scene working that thing out for you. The hookup not going to work out. But when you got God behind the behind the scene working a situation out for you, then you know without a shadow of a doubt that God got this thing in control. Not only does God have it in control, but God got my back tonight. That tell me the day that no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, God said, I got the power to condemn it. And so now I got to open my mouth and speak a word. If I want to see the favor of God upon my life, I got to understand that God can surpass what my mind could think, what I can imagine, the thing that I can dream of. God said, I'm able to do more for you than that. Oh yeah, I know it's mind-boggling. You know the reason why? Because we are spirit and we're closed in our body, but we have a soul. I'm talking about our mind, our will, and our emotion. And so the battle is in our soul. The devil always trying to take our soul into captivity. The devil always trying to discourage us. The devil always trying to get us to start believing that God did something for somebody else, but God is not going to do the same thing for me. But I come to encourage you tonight that God, what he did for somebody else, I said, God will do the same thing for you. But the thing I like about it, not only would God do the same thing for you, but I believe that God is able to do, I'm talking about something greater for you than what he did for your brother, what he did for your sister. I said, God is able to do a greater work in your life. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. So this thing that called favor, a lot of us don't understand. We walking in favor. We living in favor. Anytime you go into a hospital, I'm talking about you walk back out the hospital and the doctor said you should have been dead. The doctor said that you should not have come out of it. The doctor said that there was a bad report. The doctor said, I don't understand how in the world did you come out of this thing. The doctor did not understand it. Why? Because the favor of God cannot be comprehended with your mind. You got to get into the spirit of God to understand 
understand the things of God and the mystery of God. How God, uh, uh, let me give you a, 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 uh, just a common analogy here that we use so often. How in the world God took and made a black cow, let him eat green grass and gave him white milk. That show you how powerful God is. That show you how awesome God is. That show you what God is able to do. God is able to do some stuff in your life that will blow your mind. And see the problem is a lot of us don't believe that God going to do it. That's the reason why God 